All right, everyone, we're going to wrap up with head coach Oscar Pereja. Uh, Oscar, if you want to just get us started with your thoughts on the match tonight. Okay. Um, uh, no more words at this time uh, to recognize that we were superior, that uh, we put that energy and outplay them, uh, but that's, that's not enough, obviously. And in this industry, we need to win games. And you win games scoring goals, and that's not happening. So uh, we feel for our fans and uh, uh, this frustration of not winning at home, especially, and not being able to concrete the games that we should. Now we need to have uh, a deeper analysis that uh, you all uh, witness on the pitch and uh, from there and the front you sit. But uh, once again, that's not enough at this point. We need to win games and it does not happen. Michael? Oscar, thanks for your time. Um, you guys come back, tie the game uh, on a nicely worked goal. Uh, it seemed like momentum was with you. You, you. As you said, you were creating chances. And then LAFC just killed you on the counterattack late. Uh, was it just... Uh, just too much speed. What was going on with uh, with the counterattack late? Um, I can I can tell you after I review it because I, I see it in the in the field. Um, and my first impression was that uh, we didn't have enough numbers to control the counter. Uh, but uh, it wasn't like that. I thought we have enough numbers and we have enough people to control that play. Uh, they were faster than us in that position. And um, once again, happens that when you control in the game and then uh, you tie it and we start creating the chances, this happens. So uh, we need to correct it tactically also. Uh, you may uh, want to have an extra player that can sweep them up. And um, at that point, at other players, uh, we knew that we needed to take the responsibility to push. Uh, that's mm, what we need to do at home and trying to look for uh, that goal can get, can give us a win. And and, uh, and and that and then those two plays came, especially the second goal. Go to Austin. Oscar, um, over the last three games, this team has combined for four shots on target. Um, what needs to change offensively for, for this team to, to kind of find their rhythm offensively and, and to find those shots on target? Right, yeah, well, the metrics, are, uh, as you uh, know, at these times when you have those metrics and you see it, the first thing that uh, we think is um, uh, we can analyze and uh, whether justified or uh, find answers through the metrics, but uh, I think it goes beyond that. Uh, yeah, we have actions to score, uh, that we have possibilities, uh, but we're not being um, precise and taking a good timing to take a shot. We want to do an extra pass. Uh, what I can tell you, and this is something where I, as a coach, want to stand up and put my chest in front, is that this group, uh, they all week we're working on that part and it's not happening it's, it's not happening and and as i said I'm, I'm i'm here i need to coach them i need to guide them i need to provide possibilities and and i want to review it again again but it is not me the coach that come here uh to blame on them uh, especially when i see um that group uh, fighting the way they fought today. We have a back left to Javier and then to Chris. Uh, Javier Garcia, buenas noches. Uh, por Día Nacional News, noticias en español, ¿cómo está? Eh, mi pregunta es la siguiente. Quiero remontarme un poquito al último juego que también perdimos después de un penalti. Cambió la, la dinámica muy drásticamente después del penalti. Uh, ¿Qué se aprendió? Uh, y esa enseñanza, ¿cómo la están usando o están aplicándola después de estos dos últimos penaltis uh, para los juegos que se han jugado y para el futuro. Gracias. Bueno, gracias. Sí, buena pregunta. 
lo que pasa es que en penalti hay, hay, hay que meterla, ¿no? Y no podemos eh, señalar hoy a un jugador que no ha fallado ni un penal con nosotros, Faco. Y, y, y por eso lo banco y por eso lo respaldo a muerte, porque no es simplemente que él decida o nosotros decidamos que él tire el penal, es que lo trabajamos mucho. Y, y hoy lo tiramos afuera. Eh, Pasan en los juegos y hoy, eh, desafortunadamente, en esta situación donde necesitamos que no pasara, vuelve y pasa. Pero, de nuevo, muchachos, yo eh, trato de encontrar las respuestas adentro, desde mi silla, especialmente cuando veo un equipo que lucha, que, que mete, eh, eso está pasando. Bueno, ya, ya tendremos que asumir nuestra responsabilidad también desde el banco, ¿no? Nosotros, el entrenador, y mirar a ver qué podemos hacer. Chris, and then the mic. Hi, Oscar. Thank you for taking my question. It just seems like there was a difference in the energy between the first half and the second half. Um, the guys seemed a lot more sure in the first half. Second half, like you said, there were errant passes, extra passes that didn't go through. Um, it looked like LAFC was more on the attack on the ball. Uh, in the second half, can you talk about that a little bit? Um, in the overall game, uh, when I uh, see on our notes and uh, the reviewance, but most importantly is that sensation that I can talk about this mo at this moment without not watching the game. Uh, I thought we have the initiative all the time in first half and second half. Uh, you right. Second half, we had an extra touch. I thought LA was defending with uh, eight players, at least the majority of the time. We knew that they have fast players as, uh, as well, but we were controlling them until we tied the game. In the first half, uh, they have some initiative for some moments, but we controlled it. Uh, the PK came in a... And this is, seems like a, 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 a sort of loser talking, but I didn't see PK. I reviewed it, and no, that's that's not what we're going to discuss now. But that 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 needs to be considered too. And and uh, but you're right. Uh, it was moments, especially in the second half, we were waiting to take a shot, and and we're taking one more pass, and one, and we desperately just get in that moment where we were losing confidence against. And 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 that's what that's what the coach come. I need to I need to help him some somehow. Well, Mike, and then wrap up with Marco. Um, you, you mentioned the team has to do a, a deeper analysis following the result that you guys had today. Obviously, performance separate, but um, with, with this deeper analysis, like we, we asked, I asked you this question probably a few several weeks ago, but does. Going into the summer, does this mean that the, the club has to go into the summer transfer market and perhaps find the answer there, or are you confident that this group can turn things around uh, going into the second half of the season? Uh, normal in in these cases when the things are not coming along and you're not getting results, uh, just looking for players in the uh, window is, is is common and normal. Uh, I need to say it also that uh, the support that we have had from uh, the ownership and the club this year has been very good. And um, things are not, ha not, not happening. I cannot blame on that and desperately just start asking for uh, players and spending money. Uh, I think I need to have the responsibility to make this work because we have good players and uh, and we have a good group of players and that 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 I, I'm, I'm fear, fearless I don't have fear to say it you know but if we need to do it we do it but that's the, I don't think that's the problem I, I don't see that the problem and say the um, sometimes Sometimes for us as a coach, it's kind of the, 
the way to escape away from our responsibility, and this is not the case. The support is here from our ownership, and and the club has been good. We're gonna go to Marco for the last one. I don't know if your mic's working, Marco. You have to flop. There you go. Swap him. Okay. ¿Qué tal, profesor? Marco Quesada para Costa Rica. Eh, profesor, bueno, viene Copa América. Eh, Pedro y Wilder están en, en selección peruana. Son parte importante del equipo. Pero también saliéndome un poquito de eso, ¿qué, qué podemos esperar o qué, qué ve usted para esta Copa América? Eh, grupos, bueno, en el caso nuestro, un grupo contra Brasil, Colombia, en el caso de Costa Rica, ¿verdad? Brasil, Colombia, Paraguay. ¿Algún favorito que tenga por ahí? ¿Y cómo podríamos ver ese, esa... esa ¿Cómo podría esa entre, digamos, entre Comebol y CONCACAF, esa diferencia que hay entre, entre estas dos confederaciones? Gracias. Bueno, eh, sí, sí que es cierto que ya pues la, la Euro empezó y la Copa América va a empezar. Eh, que le deseamos mucha suerte a los nuestros eh, con Perú y seguramente pues va a ser una, una Copa América mmm, bien emocional, emocionante por, por la calidad de los equipos y jugadores que hay. Yo hablarte de favoritos ahora, eh, diría que pronto los tradicionales, ¿no? So, eh, equipos tradicionales, pero creo que los espacios eh, se han reducido tanto en, en, en el fútbol ahora que selecciones nacionales como Costa Rica y muchas otras en Sudamérica, incluyendo Colombia, pues también en algún momento se vuelven más favoritas. Esto para contestarte la pregunta, pero también en la cabeza mía no pasa ahora como ver eso ni nada, sino ponerme las pilas con este equipo. Y la Copa América, como que la tengo por acá, le, me veo, a, veo a Perú a ver cómo le va a Wilder y a... Y a ese, pero necesitamos resolver esta situación acá.